Bless you. All right, so here's the plan. We have to talk about this concept called specific heat. And specific heat is a difficult concept to understand, especially for eighth graders, because it's pretty abstract. So I'm going to do it by talking about something really strange. I'm going to talk about a chicken pot pie. Now, th that always gets some random response like that from some kid. There's always one kid in the class that's like, I love chicken pot pie. I'm just curious, does anyone do this first. Does anybody know what a chicken pot pie is? Do you know, yes. Have you seen one before? Okay. Yeah, have seen How many of you have eaten a chicken pot pie before? Okay, so like half the class, maybe you have, you don't quite remember. Okay, if you do not know what a chicken pot pie is, we can actually have the same conversation about Hot Pockets, and I will make a, um, actually, you know what else will work well too? Pizza rolls. Okay, jalapeno poppers. Have you ever had those before? Okay, good, so we're all set. We've talked about a lot of things here that might be able to help you out. Now, specific heat is weird. And you can tell it's weird because I'm starting by talking about chicken pot pies. Hey, listen, when I was little, that was the big treat. Chicken pot pie time. They would come in a little box like this, and then you'd open the box. They were always came frozen, and then they would, you'd take them out, and it looks like a pie, except it's filled with like gravy and chicken and peas and like corn. carrots and stuff, corn might be in there. Sounds absolutely disgusting, but they're actually really good. Uh, if you don't like them, I do apologize to you. So here's the plan. I had them as a kid all the time, so I wanted to have them sometime as an adult. My, my um, wife and kids were gone. They were visiting like the in-laws, and I was home because I had some sort of meeting or something like that. So I actually went to the store by myself, and I bought a chicken pot pie, a frozen chicken pot pie from Wegmans, and brought it home. And I was so disappointed because I hadn't had one in like 20 years. And I flip it over, and I look at the instructions, and it was like heat to 475 and bake for 50 minutes. That's like forever. All right, to bake one of those things. I mean, you're used to punching something in the microwave for like two minutes or maybe four minutes a long time. I have to wait in like an hour for this chicken pot pie. So of course I do it anyway, and I'm just staring at it through the glass like this. Ooh, it looks good. I'm watching it get all bubbly and crispy and stuff like that. And finally, after almost an hour, I actually had to leave it in there a little bit longer. After almost an hour of baking at a relatively high temperature, I take it out. Too hot to even touch. I got the big old, you know, the with the oven mitts, and I grab it and I put it like this right in front of me. Now there are two ways to eat a chicken pot pie. You can either go in with a fork from the top, or you can flip it. You ever seen anybody flip a chick? Oh, I do that. Yeah, that's good stuff right there. So I'm a flipper, so I flip it out onto my plate, got my oven mitts like this, take it, flip it, I break it with my fork, and as I break it with my fork, like all the steamy hot goodness is like, oh, and here I am, so excited. I put my fork in it, put it in my mouth, and of course, what do I do first, the second I do it? You know what I do? I burn myself, yes, because that's what you do when you're really, really hungry and you eat something too quickly. It's like it's like pizza. That happens with pizza, too. If I'm starving for pizza and you open the box and all of a sudden, like, you get, and then the cheese slides off and you get, like, this little, like, nuclear hot piece of cheese that swings over and sticks to your lip and you're like, oh, exact same thing, okay? Now, chicken pot pies are weird because they're what I always use every year to describe this concept of specific heat, okay? Some things are really, really, really hard to heat. They take a long time to heat. But things that take a long time to heat also take a long time to cool off. So because it took me an hour to get it up to that temperature, I might have to wait 10 or 15 minutes before I can even eat the thing because it's so fast. And I can tell some of you are still like, why chicken pot pie? That's the most random thing. I can think about lots of other hot things. Why chicken pot pie? Well, when I was little, and apparently they don't all come like this anymore. Thank you very much, Mr. Masaki. When I was little, they used to come in like these pie tins, these metal pie tins. I don't know if they still do. No, they like hard. Yeah, and it's like metal, like yeah. a little like metal. Yeah, see, that's how they do it now. But in my day, back in the olden days, they used to come in this pie tin. Okay, it was like a metal, looked like a metal pie tin. I don't know how else to say it. So it used to come in a metal pie tin, and when I, you could take it and flip it, and the second you flip it, that chicken pot pie, like 450 degrees, ah, sitting there. But then the pie tin, the second you get it, you could like put your face on it, and it's cold. It's cold like instantly. So the metal cools off really, really quickly, and the chicken pot pie stays hot forever. And that right there, believe it or not, is the concept of specific heat. Some things are harder to heat than others. 
Here's the definition that we use. Now the definition is actually pretty weird. So the definition that we're going to use is specific heat is the amount of energy required to raise one gram of a substance one degree. It's actually a number, specific heat. It's the amount of heat required to raise one gram of a substance one degree. I just got to check something here really quickly, and let's go right to burning cup, because I think this will be relatively fun. This is a table over here. You don't need to write the table down. Just take a quick look at it, because I'm going to ask you a question about it. Look at the numbers in the table. Look at the substances in the table. Okay? Here comes your question. On that table, what would be the hardest thing to heat on that table right there? What's the hardest thing to heat? Hardest thing to heat, meaning it takes the most amount of energy to raise one gram of it to one degree. Ms. Raleigh, what are you thinking? Gold. I disagree. And that's been many kids' choices because most people think that something like gold would be really hard to heat. In fact, it may be the opposite of your thinking there. Wow. Water. Water on this table is the hardest thing to heat because gold only takes 0.1 calories per gram. But water takes 1.0. That's the biggest number up there. It has the highest specific heat. Therefore, water is hard to heat. In fact, water is one of the hardest things to heat in the world. Believe it or not, water is one of these things that's tough to what heat. What about like hot tubs? Yeah, but hot tubs of water. If you have a hot tub at your house, or let's say you bought a new hot tub, okay? You fill it with water from the hose. It takes forever. Like days to heat that hot tub. For those of you who have pools, it's the exact same thing. You know, you open up your pool, uh, you have a pool? Yeah, you open up your pool on, on uh, Memorial Day, it could be 90 degrees out, and it's hot outside, hot outside, and here you are on the ladder, like this, whoo, you're not getting in there. In fact, you're not getting in there for days, like maybe even weeks. You have a pool party at your house at the end of school. That's a real common thing at the end of school. You have some friends over to the pool. Might be the end of June, the water's still cold. But because water's hard to heat, it's also hard to cool. So what happens in September, if you had a pool party in September, those are the days where the water's still warm, but the air is cold. You know the days where you don't want to get out of the water? Yeah. Maybe you have a camp up in the lake, and it's like September, and you're all like, hey, whoa, and then you go right back in, or you go running into the house or something like that. Water's hard to heat, hard to cool. So let's see what we can do with that. I need you to wear these goggles, and I need you to move on back a little bit. I need you to wear those goggles, and I need you to move on back. Okay, All right, let's see what we got. All right. Paper has a low specific heat which means it's easy to heat paper. Now what's cool about paper is it also has a relatively low flash point, which means that once this paper hits about 450 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to combust. It's going to burn in, or it's going to burn, basically. It's going to burst into flame once it hits uh, about 450 degrees or so. So what I'm going to do is I want to see about how long it takes to take something that has a low specific heat, like paper, and get it up to about 450 degrees. So you know all this. I'm just using the burner here. So like this, turn the gas on first, do this, do that. So we got a little flame going on here. OK, so here's the paper. Low specific heat, so it have a really small number. It doesn't take much heat to get it hot. And once it gets to be about 450 degrees, it's going to burst into fifth flames. Let's see how long it takes. OK, so here we go. You watch it, and you let me know about how long you think it takes. I'll count it out. And Mississippi's. We'll make it real scientific here. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. I think it's burning. Yeah. When did it start? I'm just curious. Four, four, About three, four? Three, three or four? Yeah, I agree. Right around three or four, somewhere in there. Let's do something with it. There we go. Get it out of the way. Cool. So paper has a low specific heat. It's really easy to heat. And once you get it up to about 450 degrees, it starts burning on you. Now, I need you to take those binders. I need you to 
move them to about halfway through the table like that. Okay, keep going, keep going. You're going to want to slide back a little bit closer to Anna there. And that should be a good change. All right, check this out. Uh, just don't distract me during this. I understand you're all excited and you're talking about it when you're talking to each other. And I get a little distracted in this one. I really got to pay attention to. Um, this is just water. It just has the dead burnt cup in there because I needed to put it someplace before I burn the school down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this cup with water. Notice I'm filling the outside. I'm sorry, the inside <laughs> cup with water. I'm filling the outside. That would be impressive. So what I'm going to do is just realize that you got a cup of water there. Uh, exact same thing. Water's like right there. Can you see it? Okay. Okay. That was effective then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to I'm going to do the exact same thing. Okay. Now notice that the cup is dry on the outside. That is key for you to understand this. The cup was not soaked in water. The cup has water inside of it. So the paper is still going to come in contact with the flames. Uh, yeah. See the way that you're protecting your face. That's a good plan. Okay. Here. Okay. Three. Four seconds, what was that? Four, three, three. All right, let's count this. Here we go. One, Mississippi, two, Mississippi, three, I'm gonna stop counting. Okay, you're gonna have to make some observations here. What am I on? Somebody's counting. What am I on? Her, 14, Mississippi. Cool. It's just the inside. No, it's the outside. Guess what's starting to happen in my water? It is starting to boil. Something that you wouldn't think that you could boil water in a paper cup. Because keep in mind, those flames are still touching the paper. Got it? Can you hear it? Okay, so let's talk here for a second. The second the paper hits 450, I'm going to let keep that going because we're going to use it in a second. The second the paper, can you see that it, it's starting to boil? It's got steam coming off of it. Stuff like that. Yeah, you can also smell it. So what's going on? What's going on with that? I thought when the paper hits 450, the paper's burning. And you can't say, it, it, you can't say because the cup's wet. It's not. All right, you have dry paper in the flame. So any ideas what's going on here? What are you thinking, Carla? Since the outside's dry, it's going to affect that more. But the inside, the water's like in there, so it's like telling it, like, don't catch on fire. So it's going to be all wet in there. Good. I definitely got it. But it's not the water putting the fire out. Water's not coming in contact with the fire. You understand? So I understand it. I like your telling it not to burn. I, it's kind of like, it's kind of right. It's a analogy. It's kind of right. What are you thinking? Like right now? Yeah, does it look like a burnt ring or something like that? I don't know. See, this is boiling water. I'm not really have to hold it over my face. But that's why I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> that is weird, isn't it? But it's burnt on the top. Okay, so we got something going on here. First, why is the cup burning? I think we should be able to get this. Go. Because the water's like cooling it down. The water's cooling it down. Water's hard to heat, so it's sucking the heat away. The heat's passing right through the paper, and it's being used to heat oh, the oh, water. Oh, it's like okay. So, well, no, keep going. You seem very excited. Yeah, what? Okay, so when it burns, the water takes in all the heat, and it cools off the cup, and that goes up into evaporation. Yeah, so then it starts evaporating. That's cool. But the cup was burning. Where was it burning, and why? The cup was burning a little bit. Where is oh. the cup burnt? Can you tell? You're sitting right up here. Where's the cup burnt? Um, it's burning on the top, but it's not being cooled by the water because the water's not touching it. Yeah, the it's not filled all the way. So see where it is burning? It's burning where that little lip is there. Now we got something kind of cool going on. 